So our discussion mainly will focus on bidding, and uh, we're here with Dr. Kofi Amwa, and we know he's spearheaded Ghana's um, bidding for Kan 2008, which was a success, and uh, we're getting into this conversation, looking ahead to uh, wanting to bid for the rights uh, of the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations. Dr. Kofi Amwa, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Rashida. And thanks for having us. Good to see you again. <laughs> sure. Um, we're talking about bidding. First of all, when we talk about bidding for hosting rights of a tournament, what, especially on the African terrain for the African Cup of Nations, what really are we talking about? Well, bidding is uh, you go through a process for the opportunity to host an international football fiesta, mm -hmm. in this case, talking about Africa Cup of Nations. And I think it is a credible vehicle uh, for nations to exhibit their nation to the world because football attracts a lot of viewership. Uh, so if a nation is talking about finding a platform to brand itself, uh, if it's uh, calculated properly, uh, we in Ghana can use football to be on the international stage, exhibit a part of our culture, exhibit our organizational prowess um, and also uh, used as a vehicle to boost tourism. I remember during the Cannes 2008, a lot of, uh, shortly after that, uh, the Ghana Tourism Authority said that tourism numbers have increased partly because of that platform that we had that made people like us. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it is good to bid, uh, but I don't know if you want me to continue, but what I will say is that it is also very expensive. Mm. And because it's expensive, uh, a nation needs to do a good plan, a good analysis, to really clearly understand the type of investment that has to be made, the enormity of the investment, because you're talking about accommodation. Do you have enough accommodation for all the people who are coming? And if you don't, what arrangement do you make? Sometimes the arrangement that you have to make will be expensive. Uh, transportation. You have to move people around. If, say, you are, you are hosting in four different cities of your nation, you have adequate, adequate public transport to take them there. If there's a deficiency there, you must fix it. Um, accreditation, um, and most importantly, security. Because now you are having hundreds of thousands of people coming into your country. Their welfare must be important to you. And security, I remember, come 2008, we had the Ghana Armed Forces, the immigration people, national security, the Ghana Police Service, everybody was involved. As a matter of fact, the Ghana Police Service, uh, we sponsored one of your people to go to Germany. At that time, Germany was about to host the, the World Cup to understudy what they have done to prepare to secure the tournament with all the millions of people coming. So my sister, it's, it's a noble enterprise, but it's also expensive. Mm -hmm. But if you do a proper cost-benefit bene analysis, then it can indicate to you whether you should go ahead or not. I see. What, uh, I'm sure you've started even already elaborating on the processes that you need to go through to be able to get or to win a bid. Mm -hmm. so, let's, let's get into that one. Well, number one, um, once the nation decides that my cost-benefit analysis shows that it is a positive. Uh, I may have to spend, in the case of Ghana, when we host about $300 million. Uh, what am I going to get out of the $300 million? Now, in this arena, a part, a portion of that is what we call social investment. It is, it is an investment a government makes uh, that goes to the betterment uh, the enhancement of the lives of the people, the happiness of the people. Um, it doesn't necessarily say that the return on, on the 300 million investment is going to be 50 million. So a component of that is in the social arena. But I think for a nation like Ghana, a small country like Ghana that wants to grow its economy, if you do it properly, then you also have credible financial returns. I told you one of them. We did it in such a way that it put Ghana on the map, so the tourism numbers went up. More people came after the tournament because Ghana has been exited on the map. And when people come, 
as tourists into your country. They come with their money in their pocket. They will stay in hotels. They will eat in the restaurants. They will take taxis to go around. They will do, they may buy trinkets. They may buy some kinti cloth, some, 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 some trinkets, artifacts. Yeah, artifacts. So all these things will be monies that will be left behind when they leave. So it goes to enhance your economy. So it is positive. Um, in, in, in the case of Ghana, if you want me to use that as an example, uh, we indicated that to go and spend $40 million in a place like Esipon, to go and spend $40 million in a place like Tamale, and to invest additional ones for the Ohilijan Stadium and the Barbara Stadium, one must be circumspect. Because if you remember, at that time, we were just getting out of HEPIC. We, we, our economy was not that strong. But we knew that we could calculate it properly. And so we did an analysis by going, number one, we went to Wembley Stadium. He said, this Wembley Stadium we hear costs one billion pounds. Now, if somebody is going to make an investment in one billion pounds to build an edifice, a sports infrastructure, I want to know the thinking that went into it and how are they going to make it profitable. And we were amazed to find that when we went to Wembley Stadium to talk to the managers of the place, they gave us a beautiful tour. We were amazed to find out that about 80% of the revenue that Wembley Stadium generates has nothing to do with football. Understand? So here is the thinking. We want to exhibit our football in a nice ambience, in a nice building with security features and everything. But we also know that the football alone cannot pay for it. So what else can we add? So they had meeting rooms, restaurants, exhibition rooms, all kinds of things built in. That and they can do music festivals, concerts, musical concerts. So they, they program all this into the architecture of the building and the operational mechanics of the building so that they can get all these monies to come in to pay for the debt of the $1 billion. So when we saw that, and we also knew that a lot of the African countries that had hosted the Cup of Nations, like Mali, when they finish the tournament, the stadiums are left unmaintained, goose and chickens were running over, and we didn't want that to, to happen to our country. We didn't want to invest and create white elephants. So we said that, okay, the brand new stadium that we're going to build in the Sipon and Tamale, we will include hotel facilities. Okay? The way the stadium is built, you know, the seating, so underneath there, the architect was able to design 40-room hotel attached to it. Now, this 40-room hotel is a business, you know. If it's run properly, then it can be a profitable business. And that profit can go to maintain the place. We also designed shops. We said, okay, Guineans, we, we like these kind of Bye. shops, especially the one in Kumasi, right in the center, then the one in Accra. You know, so we designed shops on the ground floor there that can be leased out to our mothers who would like to trade and our sisters who would like to trade. Nice em environment with lighting and everything, plenty of parking. So if there's no football tournament, these shops can be there to serve the people in the area and they will pay rent and that money can also add up to going to maintain the place. We designed meeting rooms. We said that these buildings are in areas where there are businesses, conference rooms, so people can come and use this place. We did all that and convinced ourselves that if we build these edifices and we do these things properly, there will be no need for tax revenue the people's money to go back to maintain it. It will be self-sufficient. Now, once a nation has done that, and you want me to talk about the bidding process. Mm -hmm. Now, at CAF, you have 12 executive directors. These are the people who are going to uh, meet to decide who we are going to pick. And of course, uh, they also send their, invest uh, their inspection teams mm -hmm to come and see your environment. You also have to do an undertaking. Uh, the government, the president himself, has to do an undertaking that uh, you, you provide security free of charge. You do this, you do this, you do this. You allow us to repatriate our uh, materials we bring, whatever money we have to repatriate. So all those things are written down. So clearly, a nation knows the commitment it has to make. 
you know, and then you start doing your lobbying. In the, in the case of Ghana, one of the reasons why we won is because we because we told uh, the then president uh, Kufo and his ministers that if you wanted to do this, this is what you're going to have to spend. And before you go and bid, please make sure you have the money, and otherwise it will be an embarrassment coming. But if you do it, with these are the, the, the scenarios that we have dreamt about, that if, if after the investment, if we do these things, it will be a positive to the economy of Ghana. Um, the events hosting, the young people who are looking for different yeah. kind of jobs. You know, football is an industry. It can really cascade into a lot of things that will create joy for your young people who are interested in the football field. So we're comfortable and confident that if Ghana won and we spend this money, it will be a, a, a plus to the nation. So um, our, our uh, uh, presentation to, in Egypt, Cairo, to the CAF executive was very thorough, very, very um, uh, well planned with, with a clear support of government. Uh, we had the president himself in the video that we showed, given his commitment, and we, we described the beauty of the nation um, from Tamale in the north, the savannah, all through the forest belt, through the, through the, the plains of Accra, to SC Pond, Cape Coast area, the coastline. Uh, we discussed the strength of our uh, security services. Um, we described the peace of the nation, the democracy. Um, and of course, we also talked about the, 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 the fact that Ghana is one of the top football nations on the African continent, all the things that we've done. At that time, we had won, I think, the same number of tournaments. We were one of the top with Egypt that had won as many as five times in yeah. Egypt. So our presentation was solid, and we won. Uh, we were competing with Gaddafi, who was throwing money around and all of that. Mm -hmm. But without money and without bribing anybody, we were able to make a convincing uh, argument that Ghana must be the nation to host. And I'm glad that we were able to win. And when we won, the government at the time supported it. Uh, we created these beautiful edifices. We created training grounds, with training grounds in Tamale, in Kumasi, in, in, in Cape Coast, in, in Accra, that the legacy that we wanted to leave, that after the tournament, at least there will be something to show. Um, and, 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 and this is what we were able to do. Okay, you've mentioned a lot of things that uh, should have made Ghana, I mean, better in terms of our finances. Have we utilized all the business opportunities that were made available with all the edifices, uh, including the tournament, in 2008? Well, um, I'm not at the National Sports Council, but I think just looking at going to the place, uh, you see that uh, all the stadia that we built, they all need maintenance. Um, even in Accra here, you can see some rust. Uh, yes, rust and cracks and the, the scoreboard. And uh, the last time I was in Tamale, my sister, I, I, could, I could not enter. Yes. The, the place looked that bad that I, I felt really bad. Now, this is not what we were expecting this, this thing to be in. Um, the one in Kumasi, the same. All, all of it, uh, the, 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 the expectation of the revenue that could be generated by professional management of these investments has not happened. And the thing is, um, you know, you do your best thinking before you go and spend money. But the, the, the embedded benefits that you're supposed to get can only accrue to you if you do the follow-up things. And after the tournament, the LOC secretariat put together, we put together our advice as to going forward how this, this stadium must be handled to put into the hands of professional management companies, either on a lease basis, joint venture basis, on, on, on an incentive basis, and, and all of that, to make sure that it, that, it doesn't sit there and rot. You know? and, and, and unfortunately, this is what has happened. Uh, and I know for a fact that this present minister of sports, when he had that weekend seminar, 
He invited sports people, and I went. I brought this up and told him that we're giving you a blueprint, and, and the, the built-in stadium in Esipon has never been finished. The one in Tamale has never been finished. The, the, the shops that were built in there, they are, they are not being utilized properly. And therefore, you don't have revenue being generated to go and maintain the place. And because government is pretty much broke, they don't have money from anywhere, and then all these stadia keep going down and going down and going down. And to me, it must, we must, as a people, begin to be a bit more serious that the future of the nation, the, the brightness of the future of the nation depends upon the correctness of our decisions and our actions today. Now, if we are going to spend these huge amounts of money, and the thinking has been done that, yes, uh, it's a lot of money, but as a nation that wants to develop the economy, that wants to incentivize its citizens to be happy and to create that collective unity as a people, we must take a chance and do this things. But then we shouldn't forget as to the steps that have been built in that we must do this to make sure that this is beneficial to us. So for me as a Ghanaian, um, I, I am a bit uh, 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 mixed feelings that uh, something was done that was beautiful for the nation, positive, put us on the map. A lot of, a lot of, I remember, you know, Ghanaian women who were not into, into, into sports wearing the nice T-shirts and trooping to the stadium, the opening ceremony using our culture, you know, the, the, the kaleidoscope of our culture from the north, from the middle bed, from the, you know, the dancing, the abdua and all, it was beautiful. The horseback riding, uh, and that little girl, wearing the kinte, mm -hmm. it was beautiful. You know, but at the same time, it must cash flow, you know. So I think that what I would say, uh, this opportunity is that I, I think uh, I want to encourage government to really look at what was the plan for this four stadia when we spend the money. And that even if the part of the plan is outdated, it can be modified a little bit. But let's go back and make sure that we put into operation all the positives that went into the design of these facilities. Otherwise, we're going to have to borrow money from somewhere to kind of maintain, and that's not, that's not wise. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that um, we spent about $350 million mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. putting together come 2008. And now, mm -hmm. on a scale of 100, uh, 0 to 100, percentage-wise, tell us, how much of it do you think that we've been able to get back? I mean, the money we spent doing this? Well, my sister, as I said, some investments have a social benefit component, you know, um, that you do certain things to create unity for your people, uh, to make them happy, uh, to bring a, a, bit of, a bit of global um, adulation to the nation, that Ghana is a shining light. You know, and, and that tournament was beautiful. So the, the, the benefit of that is not quantifiable in money. But in terms of direct money, cities or dollars, that may have accrued to the economy through can 2000. And I cannot put my finger on it, but I will say that one of the things I mentioned is the growth in the tourism numbers. Um, that too, if it's, that area is also being done, as more people come, more people also come. Uh, we did do some investments in roads, new roads leading to the stadium uh, that are still there. So those are of benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I would say that uh, maybe the stadium has been there and it has inspired some people in various forms. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the, all I can say is that from us, from the LOC, we quantified in numbers if we do it a certain way give this stadia to event management companies who know what they're doing, who have made a lot more money. That one I'm sure about, mm -hmm. but we didn't do it. I see, sure. Okay, now we want to go into 2017, but before then, a few lessons that uh, we have learned from 2008 that we mm -hmm. can take into 2017. Well, as I said, um, uh, it's, the lessons are clear that before you go and invest public money, the people's money, in something like this. And a lot of times, these kind of investments are huge. Do your best thinking in the front end. 
why am I going to spend this amount of money? And if I spend this, this amount of money, how am I going to get it back? Even if I'm not going to get all of it back, the portion that I can get back, what do I have to do? What are the steps? What are the policy mix? What are the tasks that we must do so that it doesn't become just a negative, but the positive is also realized? That's number one. But number two, for me, and I've already made my views known, that I think Ghana going for the bid for 2017 is misplaced priority. Because I told you, this 350 million you're talking about, some of the good things that were supposed to come have not materialized. Like? Why don't we go to Tamale mm. and look at the 40 hotel rooms that were designed and finish them? Mm. And then also maintain the equipment in there properly and make sure that it is managed properly. Put this edifice, this huge edifice of gargantuan investment into the hands of capable, capable people so that it will be a catalyst in the Tamale area for generating other businesses, other economic activities, and add to the economic development of that area. Why don't we do the same thing at Esipon? The 40 rooms that we designed into the structure, which is left abandoned, mm. you know, why don't we go in there with a the little money, finish them as a hotel, put them in capable hands, and do the same thing so that that 40 to 45 million we spend there would also inure to the benefit of the economic development for the people in that area. I think if we do things, if we are going to do projects, and these projects are supposed to be catalysts for regeneration of economic activity, please, it's not going to do that by itself. The building sitting there is not going to do that by itself. It's through our own management and activities, and that's what we should be doing. And I think that, obviously, if Ghana can bid to win, to host, and we are hosting in, 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 in a way that is going to add to the economic development of the country, that is going to add to putting Ghana on the map, that is going to help us generate additional tourism uh, uh, numbers. I have no problem with that. But I think that it is suicidal, it is criminal to invest the people's money and not finish it the way it's supposed to finish so that it will benefit the people. And you haven't done that, you haven't finished that, and now you're going to do it something else again. I think uh, for me, I'm one individual citizen. If some people have looked at it and they think otherwise, I wish them well. But for me, I think that we need to be circumspect. We need to be step function. Let's do first things first. We finish it, then we add up. We finish that, then we add up. Let's not start here. We haven't finished. It's going down the drain, and we go and build something on top of that. That, I think, is going in the wrong direction. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, let's just say that um, what you just said will not be heeded to by the appropriate people uh, in the ministry, uh, in government totally, and they still want to press on and go ahead to bid for the hosting rights of 2017. It's seven years now, um, seven years on, we want to go get come 2017, uh, mm. that will be nine years. Mm -hmm. What must we do right to get the rights? If we must, <laughs> I don't think there's anybody putting a gun to our head mm. that we should, but if we must, uh, then I think, as I said, the, uh, I, I have to assume that the Esipon Stadium will be one of the venues. I have assumed that Tamale will be one of mm -hmm. the venues. Maybe this is the opportunity for us that the second time around, this investment has been made, let's go and finish it properly, like it was supposed to be. And, 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 and do the same thing. Look at, look at the, the built-in revenue generators, the things that they design into them that are supposed to create income so that this income can be the one we used to. Let's go back and make sure that we finish doing all this and use this second bid and second hosting, hoping we get it second time around. We've hosted many times. Uh, 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 that something positive will come at the end of that. Right. Um, it was 350 million some seven years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I know things have changed. I mean, yes. things have gone up, inflation here and there, and all mm -hmm. of that. But 
with the, uh, bearing in mind the fact that we have four stadia, which mm -hmm. are okay mm -hmm. and they need just a bit of refurbishment, mm -hmm. do you think that we'll still need as much money to host Can 2017? Oh, not really. Not really. I mean, it's, it's like, you see, when you make those investments, and if we had done everything right, then hosting again becomes cheaper and then at some point it becomes profitable mm -hmm. because now the investment that you're supposed to make you've already made them you know so an argument can be made that because we have invested before we have to go a second time and a third time so that we can use this investment these 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 structures that now we don't have to spend a lot of money and therefore generate some income so i can see that argument and i respect that argument it's a valid argument so that means that the way that we have to do that is that then the structures that are there, let's go and do the right things so that then the cash flow will be even the more. You know? So yes, we have made some event. Now we don't have to make a road to go to a Sipon Stadium. We've already made that road. Now the area Tamale, we've already, you know, around the Babayara Stadium, around the Ohenjan Stadium, a lot of things have been done. The parking, the parking lot and all these things have been done. It has beautifully fenced. The, 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 the building structures are there. We can capitalize on that and use that to benefit this second time around. So an argument can be made that the investment that I've made will be the underpin, the, 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 the underpin investment in, in already structures that is already there to help us host properly. Mm. You know? mm. So I want to balance my, my analysis of this that yes if you do the investment right the first time then the second time around you don't have to do the same investment but if you are now going to build a new stadium in uh, 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 cape coast which i think has started and uh, i heard that we do a, a new stadium at, mm -hmm. at home as much as all these places yeah in, we have 10 regions in ghana if we have the money and we do things right and at the right time we have 10 stadia in all this region, a stadia in this region, it will be beautiful. It, you know, I mean, football and sports is something that Ghanaians like, that brings us together as a people. The tribal things vanish. So we celebrate our oneness, our Ghanaianness, you know, our cultural diversity, the rich culture and, and, and tapestry from all the different regions of Ghana and different ethnic groups of Ghana come together when we have it, these kind of festivities and it can be beautiful. But let's be circumspect and do it in the right way. Put them in capable hands. The key here, please, people in government, select people with the expertise who will do the right things so that these huge investments will be managed properly and it will be to the benefit of the growth of the Ghanaian economy and all Ghanaian citizens. Thank you. Now you're talking about um, people with the right expertise. Now, um, that's quite broad. Are we looking at management? Are we looking at um, churning out a lot more um, revenue from the investments? What mm -hmm. kind of expertise are we looking at? In what areas? Well, my sister, every business has certain skills that are required to, to be able to operate that business properly. Now, a stadium is an edifice that that is used for sports and other entertainment mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. so you must have the people who are managing these people understand these industries they must understand the football industry if if i have a stadium the way that i make money from football is to have football matches and when we have the football matches the football matches might be entertaining so that people will come and watch. Mm -hmm. When people come and watch, they will buy tickets. Mm -hmm. So we have revenue. If the, the football matches are interesting, people will watch them on television, even though they are not there. The eyeballs that you attract to your television sets because of the, the beauty of the game is the one that gives you the advertisement revenue that the Coca-Cola wants to advertise because you're playing, okay. that West Union wants to come and advertise because you're playing, and then you can charge them huge amounts of money. That's how you make money. Mm -hmm. So the people who are going to manage this kind of must understand that. Now, we also designed it in such a way that with the proper covering of the pitch, 
you can have musical concerts. So if you're going to have musical concerts, the people who are going to do this must understand that. Musical, my friends in music, you're always struggling. These are some <laughs> of the areas that we need to have the events management companies of the world. And we did invite some of the top ones in the world to Ghana when we were doing this in 2008. We were very broad-minded to really research and open up the country to all kinds of areas that impinge on this. I told we, we went to Germany to understudy them. We went to Wembley Stadium to understudy them. We brought in a legacy event management company to tell us how to do things right. So after the tournament, there will be legacies left to help the country and also how to create events in these edifices that took cash flow to bring them. So there are people there who have the skill sets. And for us, Ghanaians, even if we don't have, and I think today we do have, you know, uh, multiple concepts and all these mm -hmm. things, people who put together the Ghana Music Awards and all that, maybe they need to buy a few model equipment in here, and they can do these mega concerts, mm -hmm. you know. Um, collaboration of Ghanaian artists and outsiders coming oh, yeah. in here, you can fill them beautifully, make videos, and distribute them. Uh, this uh, screaming is, uh, videos is, is what makes money in the world. Something is happening at a crossport stadium is being viewed across the world. Streaming. On, uh, streaming on people's telephones. So there are people who understand these things, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these are the people, I think, going forward into the future that the, our, our public sector people who are in charge of hiring the right people, I think they should do the right thing and help the country move Good. forward. Putting it bluntly, are you then at a, a, do you then disagree with the fact that the four national stadia have been entrusted into the care of the National Sports Authority? Well, uh, I, I will not disagree with anything that works. If, if over the years, in the history of managing our sports assets, our stadia, our pitches, whatever, Putting them in a certain entity, it has been beautiful and smooth running and cost effective. Then we continue. But if it hasn't, then it means we, have, we must say time out. There's something we are doing wrong. Maybe, maybe uh, the, the, the organization that we are entrusting this thing to, maybe this is the, not the right time to do that. Maybe let's try the private sector. Maybe let's have an arrangement with a company that that we share revenue after a certain cost. They have responsibilities to, to engage their skills in producing a certain level of income. Mm -hmm. And after that income, which is the threshold to, to, to either pay for the investment we made, mm -hmm. get some little uh, profit or enough money to maintain it, anything above that we can share with them. Mm -hmm. We can have an arrangement like that, you know. And therefore, then the person or the company that is managing it, they have their skin in the game. They have, to, they have to accept certain financial responsibilities. And it's only if they do it properly that at some point they will make a profit. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes to help all of us. But if we do it as, as this is the people's property, it makes no difference whether we make money or not. Look, at the Kumasi Stadium and Accra Sports Stadium, we created, the LOC created a viewing stands that we rented out for $250,000 just that period. Okay? When we're doing it, people thought no. But we, they, 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 they were oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. And companies do this all around the world. Companies will rent these places and bring their customers to view a beautiful football match in a beautiful ambience, drinking their champagne, being happy and all of that. So we must understand when we go into this field. Now, the way we created this, this area, it was beautiful. I have pictures of it. You go there now, you cry. The furniture we put in there have been stolen. The TVs we put in there have been stolen. The place has been abandoned. Why do we do that? Why do we create progress for, for ourselves and then we ourselves go and destroy it? So you're talking about putting this thing in the hands of the National Sports Authority. It is them who manage these places. So who took those things out? Were there no security? Don't we have security to, 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 to secure the properties in these places? Huh? It costs us money to put it there, even though we made a profit because able to market it properly, package it in a certain way that it was attractive 
You know, how, there were three oil companies from Nigeria. I remember last, the, the, a week before they started, they were poor please, you got to get us one of those. As I said, they've been gone. They have paid for. They were begging. They had the 250,000. You create wealth with your mind. You create wealth with a concern to help to change the lives of the people. And if you are going to spend 350 million people of the taxpayers' money, please, let's do it properly. We've already invested the money. Let's manage these edifices properly. Let's put in competent people so it adds up to the development of the Ghanaian economy to the, to the benefit of all citizens. I'm wrapping up on this conversation. My very final question to you. Again, we haven't reached the full benefits presented to us by 2008. But again, in 2017, um, there's been a lot of dynamism. It would have been nine years uh, on. Business opportunities one day once again surface. One day become even more. Uh, one day become even bigger than they were in 2008. Well, it's possible. Any international event is a big business event. Sports is big business, and therefore, any time you are hosting any level of a big international event like. Can 2008 and can 2017, the whole continental fiesta is a huge business opportunity. And therefore, I think if we are going to do it, you know, I remember can 2008, we set up committees. There was the business committee. We had people from all the big businesses. Um, I remember one company writing a check for $400,000 to support us because they believed in that. And, and and, and, and so if we're going to do this, and, and I'm sure that the people that the government has selected to handle this, they have the capacity and the skills to do it properly. And, you know, I have no problem with that. I wish them well. Um, but I think the way that the, the inherent benefits will come out will be to, to, to invite Kenyan businesses to participate ahead of time to talk about all these things that are going to happen and, and therefore then it will be done properly. And a lot of jobs were also created. I mean, uh, women who were coming to sell their food and all of that. You see, it's, it's a celebration of a piece of us. If somebody comes to Ghana and they buy a piece of cloth or, or they take a T-shirt with Ghana in it, they are taking pieces of Ghana with into them. other countries. They are spreading Ghana across the world for us. And, and therefore, I'm one of those people who believe in these kind of things. The only thing I'm saying is that we must be circumspect to realize that this is a huge amount of money that we are spending and that it can benefit us only if we do it the right way. Okay.